Hey, good morning again. All right, so thank you, Dylan. Um, and Eli's just put up a image of the Medicine Buddha, so I'm going to leave it there until we actually get started on the uh, meditation text. So that you can kind of get an image of it in your mind, because um, the meditation text... Why don't you do it? That. <laughs> you got it? I think we're good. Okay. All right, is that better? Not quite so intense. Yeah. So, um, where was I? Medicine Buddha. <laughs> oh, Medicine Buddha. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, so this this meditation test that we're going to do in a little while requires um, a fair amount of visualization, and so that's why I'm going to leave that up there so that you can kind of get it in your mind a little bit because we'll have the text put up there. And for those of you who are not really into reading uh, or unable to see the text um, while we do it, I've got, we have uh, a number of hard copies, so we can make those available. Okay, so, Medicine Buddha practice, um, doing this kind of a meditation text is one of many tools that we've got in the Tibetan tradition for accessing and working with our minds and working with our emotions, um, trying to allay, get into, understand our confusion and our uneasiness. Some of the other tools that you all are familiar with are shamatha meditation, vipassana meditation, insight meditation. Um, and those are a couple of ways that we use to get beyond our ordinary sort of deluded mind but relying on a structured practice is another way of getting beyond our ordinary consciousness, getting underneath and inside the ordinary consciousness, able to touch um, more subtle levels of awareness. So we utilize a meditation text called a sadhana, and this guides the practitioner through a series of visualizations, mantra recitation, prayers, and usually some sits, some short sits, um, to imagine that we embody the qualities of the fully enlightened being that we are meditating upon. It's an energy practice, um, and it uses imagination to harness our ability to evolve from an ordinary, limited, deluded ego into a being of unlimited compassion and wisdom and insight. Visualization, as you know, you all know, is a very powerful, it has lots of, uh, it's very powerful for emotional content. So think for a second of somebody that you really love or you really admire could be a mom, could be a dog, could be, you know, your favorite quarterback, you know, just somebody that, you know, you really admire, a teacher maybe. When you bring their image to mind, you don't just get their physical presence, you don't just get their physical characteristics, right? You get what um, is called the whole gestalt, the whole ball of wax. You get their power, you get their, their emotions, you get your feelings towards them. You get, you know, you get that person, all of, you know, their personality. It isn't just the physical image, right? So the power of imagination, visualization is a very powerful thing. 
it's a skill we've used since childhood, right? It's a way that we've made something more likely to happen. It's a very long accepted training method in sports. Right, anybody who's played golf or, well, actually any sport, there's a lot of visualization in that kind of training. Um, we've been using our imagination since we're very young. Maybe we're a little rusty, but um, this, this helps us bring our imagination to life. So what can we get from studying a Medicine Buddha text? I asked a few people in the Sangha that I know who have been practicing this for a while to share with me how the Medicine Buddha practice impacts them. And here's what one person wrote to me. I continue the practice because I like the sadhana, which is easy to understand and is clearly for myself and clearly for others as well. I have noticed that the Medicine Buddha practice or even saying the mantra is most powerful when I am doing it with someone who said they really need the practice for themselves or one of their relatives or friends. One time I repeated the mantra silently after somebody I was volunteering with described their adverse health conditions and I felt calm and love being generated as a result. Here's what somebody else wrote to me. I've been doing the Medicine Buddha practice for several years. I have found it helpful to recite the practice for family members who are ill. Doing the practice for others is where it starts for me. But the result is that I feel energy and motivation to keep going when I am exhausted and worn out. I have hit the wall many times. It's almost like the Medicine Buddha made this commitment to help living beings no matter what. Somehow the practice has transferred this attitude to me. So, who is Medicine Buddha? Medicine Buddha is introduced to us through a sutra called the Sutra of the Master of Healing. Um, I do not know the origin of the sutra. I don't know if it's Indian or Tibetan or Chinese, but it's a teaching from Shakyamuni to Manjushri. Um, he's talking to Manjushri through the entire sutra, and then in the end, he starts um, talking with Ananda also. Um, we learn that the master of healing Buddha is called Azure Radiance Tathagata, thus the blueness, right? Um, and he's from a world called the Pure Crystal Realm. And when he became a Bodhisattva, he made 12 vows. Now, I'm not going to read them all, but I'll give you some taste as to uh, what those vo vows are. He says, I vow that after having attained perfect enlightenment, I should grant by means of boundless wisdom to all beings, the inexhaustible things that they may need and that they may be free from any want. Those beings with imperfect senses are sick in many respects. All of them, when they hear my name, will regain normal appearance, become intelligent, and all their senses shall be perfectly restored. They shall not suffer from disease. And then I'm gonna read the seventh one because it's something that we see all the time. So this is the seventh vow. I vow that after my reincarnation and having attained perfect enlightenment, those who are tormented by diseases, who have nobody to whom nobody to whom they can seek for help without a refuge without a doctor without medicine without relatives without a home these poor and miserable beings shall all of them be free from diseases and trouble and shall enjoy perfect health of body and mind once my name reaches their ears they shall have families friends and properties aplenty and shall all be brought to the supreme enlightenment of Buddha. So there's 12 vows very similar to that. 
but different. I mean, they're all they're all different, but they're all similar. I mean, you get the gist. So um, the sutra also introduces the mantra of Medicine Buddha, and Shakyamuni says to Manjushri, "If you see a pious man or woman who suffers from a disease." You should do the following for those sick people. Recite the mantra 108 times, and then all diseases will disappear. I mean, wouldn't that be great? Um, finally, uh, after, it's not a very long sutra, it's actually quite short, but finally at the end, Shakyamuni says, therefore, I now ask all beings to light up the lamps and hang the banners to set free the animals and do good deeds so that misery and grief can be overcome and life's hardships can be avoided. So that's the sutra, or at least a little excerpt from the sutra. So from the sutra, these meditation texts are developed. And again, I do not know the origin of the meditation texts. Um, I don't know who the original uh, person who, who, who made the text from the sutra is, but the one that we have and that we use most um, of the time is a text from the FPMT, the Foundation for the Preservation of the Mahayana Tradition, and all of the all of the uh, um, vows are in here, uh, and we repeat all of these vows. So the sadhanas are developed from the sutras, and it's these sadhanas that we recite either in groups or individually. You can do them, and you know, like um, many people do a sadhana. The, People who have taken refuge have got a Shakyamuni sadhana, and I'm sure many of us do that at home by ourselves. Um, these sadhanas bring forth a visionary world. It's like the teachers who develop these meditation texts say, okay, so now you've heard the story. Now you've read the sutra, but here, here is a roadmap. This is the roadmap on how to actualize these qualities, how to bring them into you. So this kind of structured meditation practice is a way to get away from our ordinary deluded mind and to touch these really subtle levels of consciousness. So the quality that we're focusing on with Medicine Buddha is, of course, healing. And there's you know a number of other Buddhas that you can see around here. We have. Chenrezig Gavalokiteshvara, where what we focus on is compassion. Um, Manjushri, we focus on wisdom. Um, Vajrapani, we focus on purification. So there's a lot of different meditational deities. Well, with Medicine Buddha, we're focusing on healing. So the question is, is what is healing? What kind of healing can I do? What does healing mean in this body at this time? So my initial response when I was talking to Lama about this as well, empathy and compassion. And he says, you know, it really goes beyond that. Healing is a bigger commitment. It's a giving of energy, of fearlessness, of generosity, of friendliness. It's a way of stimulating our own and hopefully maybe another person's healing capacity, enlarging our abilities. Um, during COVID, I took a, um, it wasn't exactly a retreat, but it was a series of lectures through Shavasti Abbey, uh, Venerable Tupton Children. And there was about 10 lectures that she did on Medicine Buddha. And she said, this is what, and I'm equating this with healing. So she said to think of all the energy and the perseverance and the patience that it just takes to hang in there, just to keep going. The vow is to stick with it and to build inner strength and then maybe even help others. So isn't that a kind of healing? 
just the ability to stick with it, just the ability to have the strength and the perseverance and the resilience. So that's that was one of one interpretation. Lama Jimpa offered the perspective that this is a life force practice. It's also kind of magical. It's a little like chaplaincy. Um, and when the chaplain enters a patient's room, either in hospice or in the hospital or wherever, wherever you're meeting somebody, you've got no idea what is needed. But what is definitely known anytime, really, you meet anybody is that we all need emotional ease, we need repair, and we need support. So again, this is a life force practice, not an analytical practice. It's meant foremost to help the practitioner, um, to heal the practitioner so that we can restore, revitalize, and energize our own compassion and love, our own patience, and our own resilience, whatever it is that we need to heal. So we're going to go through the practice in a few minutes, um, and we're going to read it together. And you're not required to read this. You can just sit and listen. That's fine. If you do want a text, because when it comes up on the screen, you can't see it. Um, yeah, maybe they're down on the, the short ones are down on the bottom. Um, Autumn can give you one if you need one. Um, but first, let's look at the image that is up there. So we're looking at the Medicine Buddha's blue body. It's open, transparent, and tranquil like the sky. Now, that's a really key point. This is not a solid image. This is totally transparent. It is made of light. It looks solid there, but it's not. It's made of light. Everything is there, light. There's nothing solid about that image at all. Um, his eyes are open. They're receptive for very clear seeing. The aurora plant that he holds um, in his right hand and a bowl of nectar in the left hand, um, these are medicines for body and mind, and they have no bad side effects. They symbolize that all life around us is medicine. Everything has a biological beneficial relationship to each other. Everything is healing. Everything is medicine. So all of this is a reminder that I need to enter this practice open, clear seeing, relaxed, receptive, and have every confidence that the time spent and the medicine being offered is going to be beneficial to body, speech, and mind. So you kind of do a little prep. You get yourself, you don't just rush in and sit down. You just do a little sit, get yourself open, ready, relaxed. OK. So begin, we begin by visualizing the Medicine Buddha, allowing this whole picture to develop. Again, this is an image made of light representing wellness, health, tranquility. So you can, again, you can read along with me or not, um, but to bring forth a visualization. And again, remain flexible. It's going to say to visualize him on the crown of your head. Um, I almost always put the visualizations in front of me, which is fine. So remain flexible. Um, these images again, are not solid. Don't try too hard on the details. Just try to bring the presence. Try to bring the energy in front of you or on top of your head. So don't worry too much about the details. And now we'll put up the, the sadhana. Okay, so we're going to read the first visualization. There we go. Thanks. 
and read with me or not. Above the crown of your head, upon a lotus and moon disc, is the medicine Buddha. His body is blue in color, and blue light radiates from him in all directions. His right hand, in the gesture of granting sublime realization, rests on his right knee and holds the stem of an aurora plant between his thumb and index finger. His left hand, in the gesture of concentration, holds a lapis lazuli bowl filled with medicinal nectar. He is seated in the Vajra posture, wearing the three saffron robes of a monk, and has the signs and marks of a Buddha. Okay, so now we're going to clarify our motivation and our intention by taking refuge, stating the bodhisattva aspiration, and doing the seven limb prayer. And we'll just do the refuge in bodhicitta once since we've already done it. So I take refuge until I am enlightened in the Buddhas, the Dharma and the Sangha, through the merit I create by practicing giving and the other perfections, may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. Reverently, I prostrate with my body, speech, and mind to Guru Medicine Buddha, and present clouds of every type of offering, actual and mentally transformed. I confess all my negative actions accumulated since beginningless time and rejoice in the virtues of all holy and ordinary beings. Please remain until cyclic existence ends and turn the wheel of Dharma for sentient beings. I dedicate all the virtues of myself and others to the great enlightenment. Okay, so next are the requests. And we're requesting the Buddha to inspire my mind. And so what does that mean? Well, maybe it's recognizing that I can't do this alone. I need help. And I'm humbly requesting the Buddha to help me transform my mind, to help me be more receptive and open and clear seeing. And an analogy the veteran, veteran venerable children uses is a radio. She says the energy waves of healing and compassion are constantly being sent in the 10 directions by the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. But their ability to get through to us depends on receptivity. Is the radio on? Did you turn the volume up? Can you hear it? So maybe I'm just asking for encouragement to open up my mind, whatever, whatever inspiration means to you. So there are four requests, and we're going to do a pause, just a short pause between each one. And try not to let your mind wander too much. Try to keep your mind, if you can, on the visualization, on the cover of the sadhana, if you have one, is a pretty good picture if you need one. So let's go ahead and do the requests. I request you, Bhagavan, Master of Healing, whose sky-colored holy body of lapis lazuli, significant oh, and compassion, as vast as limitless space, please inspire my mind. I request you, compassionate Master of Healing, who holds in your right hand the king of medicines, symbolizing your vow to help all sentient beings plagued by the 424 diseases. Please inspire my mind. I request you, compassionate master of healing, who holds in your left hand a bowl of nectar, symbolizing your vow to give the glorious undying nectar of Dharma to eliminate the degenerations of sickness, fear, stress, depression, grief, old age, and death. Please inspire my mind. I prostrate. Go for refuge and make offerings to the fully realized destroyer of all defilements, completely perfected enlightened being, who has realized the ultimate nature of all phenomena, 
medicine Buddha, king of lapis light, may you vow to benefit all sentient beings now ripen for myself and others. Okay, so next you'll see the mantra and then you'll see the meaning of the mantra. So I'm just gonna say it so, cause we're gonna be doing some mantra in just a few minutes. So this is the way that we pronounce it here. This is not necessarily the only way that this is all pronounced. So it's Tayata, Om, Bekensei, Bekensei, Maha Bekensei, Rajasamagate, Soha. So the Bekensei in some places you're going to hear Bekanse, but so you can say Bekanse if you like. Or bacon say so it's taya ta om bacon say bacon say maha bacon say rajasama gate soha. So following are a couple more visualizations and the mantra recitation. So these following visualizations bring in emotional, physical, and the mental components of healing. And they can be very effective if you use your imagination. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna read these two visualizations. And first we feel, fill our body. We feel that our body is being filled with light. And as that light drains away, all negativities and obscurations are drained out of our body. And then again, we're going to be filled with light. And this is bringing all good qualities to us. So those are the two visualizations. So we're going to read those. And then while you try to hold some components of those visualizations, whether it's the light going through you, just, you know, whatever it is that works for you from those visualizations, we're going to recite the mantra. And we're going to do a few of them out loud, and then we're going to do 21 of them silently. Okay. So. So this is healing for yourself. In response to your requests, infinite blue rays of light stream down from the heart and body of the king of medicine. The light completely fills your body from head to toe, purifying all diseases. If you have any pain or any specific illnesses, focus the blue light directly to this spot and visualize the light burning away the pain and disease. All ailments due to interfering forces and the negative karma and mental obscurations that cause these, as well as anxiety, fear, and negative emotions are also purified. These leave you in the form of dirty liquid, which then completely disappear. Your body becomes the nature of light, clean and clear like a crystal. Light from the Medicine Buddha again fills your body, bringing with it the realizations of the path and all the good qualities of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Your mind is transformed into love, compassion, and wisdom. While doing the visualizations, recite the mantra as much as possible. Tayata Om Bekense Bekense Maha Bekense Rajasamagate So. Taya ta om bacon say bacon say bacon say righteous summer got they so ha taya ta om bacon say bacon say maha bacon say righteous summer got they so ha taya ta
You know, Venerable Children also had sort of an interesting thing to say about this mantra recitation. She said, what would I feel like if I healed from all the stuff I'm dragging around with me? What if I just put it down, recite the mantra, and let myself heal? So just, you know, if you're doing mantra or something like this, just like, just drop all the BS and just let that light go through you. Just try to heal, just for that little period of time. Okay, so now we're going to do an absorption. Um, so what Lana said about the absorption is, if you want to heal, be the healer. All right, that's what we're doing here. This is where we're going to reach inside and touch our own healing nature. We're going to do a short sit, about six minutes. And we're going to take time to imagine and experience things well, that will make us healthy, whatever that might be. I mean, like in the, the first visualization, you've got, I don't know, a bum knee. So think about the light going to that knee, just massaging it, just making it feel better. Um, maybe you had a disagreement that's going around and around and around, right? So maybe you could just admit, I screwed up, I made a mistake, I've got a part in this. Acknowledge that you're suffering, apologize internally, and feel the energy of harmony and peace and forgiveness. That's one way to do it. Um, in any case, just be creative. Bring energy, strength, compassion, patience, resilience, any attribute that's going to make us feel better. We're trying to imagine ourselves healing from afflictions and suffering. So we're going to do this absorption, and then we're going to do a sit. So try to keep that image in mind. When you stray, come back to that image. Come back to the blue light. Come back to whatever it is that, that you got in your imagination. Okay, so here's the absorption. After reciting the mantra, the medicine Buddha melts into light and absorbs into your heart. Your mind becomes non-dual with the Buddha's Dharmakaya mind.
Okay. So now we're going to do the healing for others. Sorry, I knocked this thing. Is it still on there? No, I, I don't know. Uh, I got a ton of stuff behind my ears. <laughs> Yeah, is that good? Is that good? Okay. All right. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's good, right? Okay. All right. Um, okay, so now we're going to do healing for others. And one of the things that I didn't mention earlier was that when we do this practice, um, Doug and I have been doing a Medicine Buddha practice on, I think, the first Friday of the month for evening, I don't know, years. Um, during COVID, I think we did it every Friday online. But one thing that we do do is we do dedications um, at the end of the practice and we always dedicate it to others that we know of that need prayers, that need healing thoughts. Um, the people that are in the um, prayers and practices book that we have in the back are always included. Um, and then we each, either silently or out loud, bring our own people, dogs, People living or dead, by the way, they don't necessarily have to be living, um, that we want to dedicate the practice to. So in healing for others, this visualization and this absorption reach out to include others. And um, it says um, to visualize the Medicine Buddha on the crown of each living being's head. And then it says you may think specifically of others, specific people. And that's what I at least find most effective is to bring to mind one or two or a few but folks that, that really you know who need some healing wishes and to bring them to mind, bring them into the room with you. Bring, put them on your shoulder, put them sitting next to you, facing you, but bring them into the room. Um, again, we're going to go ahead and we're going to recite the visualization. We're going to recite the absorption. Oh, we didn't do the visualization. We're going to do the mantra again. And again, just drop all of the baggage. Just let yourself heal. Drop all of their baggage and let them heal while we're doing the mantra. And then we'll do the absorption and we're going to do a very short set, a shorter one than we just did because I don't know what time it is. Okay, so healing for others. Visualize the Medicine Buddha on the crown of each living being's head. You may think specifically of those who are suffering and in need of healing. Do the visualization with the light first purifying their diseases and their causes, and then bringing them the realization of the path to enlightenment. Recite the mantra, Tayata Om Bekansi Bekansi Maha Bekansi
Vacancy, vacancy, maha, vacancy, vajra, samagate, soha. Imagine the medicine Buddha on the crown of each sentient being's head, melting into light and being absorbed into their hearts, bringing infinite peace, compassion, and wisdom. Okay, so before we do the dedication prayers, um, I want to read a poem that was offered by one of our Sangha members um, about her medicine Buddha practice. Um, and then I think we'll do the poem. We're going to do the um, dedication prayers that are in the sadhana, and then we'll do some Q&A, and then we'll do the long life prayers. Okay. Um, all right, so here's, here's this really wonderful poem. The healing blue light of his body dissolves into me. He helps me understand that I am not alone or singled out or special, that we all have our root poisons, attachment and clinging to one thing or another, the compassionate care he gives me the unconditional love and forgiveness extended to me, no matter how many times I make mistakes, the chance to confess and purify. Drinking the Dharma, an elixir he holds out, fills and cleanses me. His mantra encircles and protects me. I feel that I can hold my seat. I feel my connection to my Buddha family. 
I find the strength to continue along the path of love. Okay, so we'll do the dedication prayers that are here in the text, and then time for Q&A, yeah, a little bit of time for some Q&A or comments or none, whatever happens, and then we'll do the long life prayers. So, may the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. Through this virtuous action, may I quickly attain the state of Medicine Buddha and lead every being without exception into that pure world. Just like the Guru Medicine Buddha, who guides all sentient beings with compassion as infinite as space, may I also become a compassionate guide of sentient beings who exist in all directions of the universe. Okay, questions, comments, observations, anybody? Nada? <laughs> Nada, all right, okay. So let's do the long life prayers. We have an online question. What do the Tibetan words say by Andrew Smith? The same thing, I suspect. Yeah, like um, the only ones I really know is the um, the refuge prayer. I know that in Tibetan, um, I'm, but I don't know, Connor to say the same thing. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay, we're going to start with the Long Life's Prayer for His Holiness the Dalai Lama. In the land encircled by snow by mountains, mountains you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chen Rezik Tens and Gyatso, please remain until Samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Low song, a magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream, profound and vast instructions. To So you are welcome to return the sadhanas um, up here on the little basket, or you're welcome to take them with you, but I just ask if you do take them with you, that is a, you know, a text, a, a, a holy text, so treat it accordingly, okay, no putting it on the floor, sticking your cup of coffee on it, <laughs> like that. Anyway, okay, that's it. Thank you much. Thanks everybody on Zoom for coming. Have a great day. Oh, whoops, do we have announcements? We do um, the first weekend of October 7th and 8th, is that what it is? Um, Geshe Gendon will be here doing a short workshop from uh, both days on Saturday and Sunday from 11 to 4 on chaplaincy, sort of an introduction to chaplaincy. Um, so he and Lama will both be teaching. Um, the workshop, I understand, is going to go from 11 to 12.30. Then there will be a break until 2 for lunch. And then it'll go again from 2 until 4. So on Sunday, it'll be regular service with Geshe Gendon. I guess I'm not sure how they're going to work that out. But until 12.30, and then we'll have regular potluck. And um, then the workshop will continue from 2 to 4 on Saturday. If you come, please bring your own lunch or go out or something. But there'll be an hour and a half break. And the registration information is on the bulletin board in the back and also on the ROAR, in the ROAR, and the website. OK, anything else? Who he? Oh, on 
Oh, I've got a mic. Never mind. <laughs> so he's he's going to do darshans on Monday or Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you should contact info at lionsroar.org if you want to have a private interview with Geshe Gendon or talk to Patty. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay, okay. All right, anything else? Well, not. And for next week, we will not have any in house, it will all be on Zoom. So if we would like to attend next week's service, just go to lionsroardharmacenter.org, right? Is it .org? And then go to the events and then go to or calendar and then events. And yeah. Just next Sunday, it's for a retreat. Oh,